Given a weighted complete bipartite graph G with partite sets X and Y, we can form a weighted cover by assigning vertex weights Xi, Yj, so that the weight of an edge is less than or equal to the sum of the weights of the incident vertices. Given a weighted cover, the equality graph consists of the edges whose weights exactly equal the weight of their incident vertices. And if we could find a perfect matching in the equality graph, this would give us a maximal weight assignment. If, as we saw, our equality graph might not allow for a perfect matching, so we need to adjust the weight somehow. Suppose we take some set of vertices x prime in the equality graph, let their neighbors be y prime. We can create a new equality graph if we decrease the weights of vertices in x prime by some amount d and increase the weights of the vertices in y prime by some amount e. If we do that, then some edges not in the original equality graph might because their end vertices have changed weights, be included in a new equality graph. So what are D and E? Well, suppose we want to keep any edges already in the equality graph. If we decrease one end vertex by D, we have to increase the other end vertex by the same amount to keep the sum unchanged. So we need D equal to E. Now if we assume the edge weights are integers, or are converted to integers, then any edge not already in the equality graph is at least one less than the sum of the weights of its incident vertices. Since the edge isn't already in the equality graph, then at most one of the incident vertices will have its weight changed, so let's change the vertex weights one unit at a time. Later on we'll make this more efficient, but remember Gauss's dictum, solve the problem first, then improve your solution. So let's take a look at our graph again. Our initial weights gave us an equality graph, but we can't form a complete matching. So let's reduce the weights of vertices A, B, C, and D by 1, and increase the weights of their neighbors by 1. And with the new weights, we get a new equality graph. Now since job 2 is still disconnected, we can't find a perfect match. So let's reduce A, B, C, D again by 1, and increase the adjacent vertices 1, 3, and 4 by 1, which gives us a new equality graph. We still can't form a perfect matching, so we'll decrease A, B, C, and D by 1, and increase 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1. This gives us a new equality graph, but it's the same graph. And so notice that once we've included all vertices from both sets, decreasing one set of weights and increasing the other weights won't allow us to add any new edges. So it's possible that we will never be able to produce a perfect matching. What we need to do is to choose some vertices and their neighbors. Since neighbors of those neighbors might not have their weights changed, we might lose some edges in our equality graph. Should we worry about them? So suppose edge ij is in the current equality graph, but not in the new graph. This would be because the weight of the edge is strictly less than the sum of the weights of the incident vertices. But a perfect matching would have a total cost that includes both xi and yj, so it would not include edge ij. Consequently, losing the edge ij would not affect our ability to find a perfect matching.
So how do we choose which sets to work with? For guidance, we we'll can use Hall's theorem. Let G be a bipartite graph with partite sets X and Y. If for every subset S of X, the neighbors of S have greater cardinality than S itself, then a matching exists that saturates X. Now, Hall's theorem is actually useful here in its contrapositive form. If we can find a set whose neighbor set is smaller, then no matching exists that saturates X. So let's consider the vertex weights where the neighbors of A, B, C, and D were 1, 2, 3, and 4. So at this point, we couldn't have changed any of the vertex weights to get any new edges. But we notice that the set B, C, D has neighbor 4 only. So Hall's theorem would tell us that a perfect matching is impossible. So we'll need more neighbors. So let's decrease the weights of just B, C, and D by 1, and increase the weight of vertex 4 by 1. This gives us a new equality graph. But now we have a new equality graph, which has a perfect matching. The sum of the edge weights is 27. And meanwhile, the cost of the weighted cover is 27. And since the sum of the edge weights is the cost of the weighted cover, the matching is maximal. We knew that anyway because it was a perfect match, but it's good to verify it. Now, our process relied on choosing a set of vertices B, C, and D whose neighborhood had fewer elements but we could have chosen a different set of vertices. So this is a heuristic solution to the general assignment problem. In particular, it requires us to make an arbitrary choice. In an algorithm, we have no choices. And so the question is, how do we turn this into an algorithm? Let's take a look at that next.